Hello, this is Nichelle Nichols. As Uhura, Chief Communications Officer on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, I had a fantastic time traveling through the universe, exploring strange new worlds. It was a remarkable trek through the galaxy, built on brilliant imagination. Ah, but that's in the 23rd century. None of today's spacecraft can take us to the stars. However, the secrets of our universe can be discovered without starships or tricorders or even transporters. How? By allowing the sheer power of the night sky to arouse your curiosity. By exploring even further. By becoming the stargazer within you. I remember when I was eight years old, when I first became fascinated with the sky. Grandma, I got gold stars on my paper at school today. That's very good, Jimmy. Stars way up in the sky have points too, don't they, Grandma? No, not really, Jimmy. Look at that bright one way up there, see? No points. All the stars up there are actually round. That was cool. It was my first step to becoming an astronomer. That young boy, long ago, wasn't done asking questions or observing the heavens. He noticed that the star was orange and later found its name was Arcturus. He learned the trick of finding Arcturus. First find the Big Dipper, then follow the handle of the Dipper and arc to Arcturus. Today that young boy who loved the stars is an astronomy professor at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. He is an internationally known author. His latest book is The 100 Greatest Stars. He is Dr. James Kaler, the Stargazer. He wants to know how stars are born, how they live their lives, and how they will die. From average stars like our sun, to the mighty and mammoth hot stars like Eta Carina. As star tearing itself apart, eventually to explode as a supernova. Though Jim enjoys the physics, the chemistry, and the mathematics of astronomy, he also loves the elegance of the night sky from his own backyard. He takes pictures. He encourages his students not only to learn the science of astronomy, but also to seek out and witness its beauty. To put this stellar marriage in his own words, Dr. Kaler invites us to hold the stars in our hands and throw them back to the sky to see our place among them. After that memorable night with his grandma, the young astronomer kept adding to his stellar experiences. His child's curiosity kept expanding like the universe itself. I remember when I was 12 years old, watching the great square of Pegasus rise in the east tipped over like a diamond. Something rose beneath it. The diamond was pointing down at this brilliant yellow-white star. I can't even remember how I figured out that it was not a star, but really the planet Jupiter. I was 12. It takes 12 years for Jupiter to go around the sun. So that's just where the planet was when I was born. 
When only 13, Jim bought his first telescope. It was small, only three inches across, and it wobbled terribly. But for the young stargazer, the universe grew dramatically. One of his first discoveries was the Ring Nebula, an exquisite shell of stellar debris in the constellation Lyra the Harp. I could see this little smoke ring. I dragged my parents out in the middle of the night. I screamed, look at this, look at this. And they looked at it and said, isn't that nice? And then went back to bed. They hadn't a clue as to what they were seeing. This glowing body is an expanding cloud of hydrogen and helium gas, the death throes of an old, aging star. Our galaxy is populated with countless immense clouds of gas and dust, intricate, beautiful, spectacular nebulae. Operating that small telescope, Dr. Kaler was honing his skills as a future astronomer. Science doesn't diminish the experience of stargazing, it enhances it. Knowing what astronomical objects are, how they are made, parallels knowledge of music. People may say that if you can read the score of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, then it loses some of its power and meaning. That's nonsense. The more you know, the more you understand. The more you learn about astronomy, the more you appreciate the glory that nature actually gave us. Scusate me, excuse me for barging in. Uh, Galileo Galilei here, still a stargazer after all of these years. I'm always looking for an audience so I can talk about our amazing universe. Just want to add a short note to what Dr. Kaler said about learning and uh, discovering. Many of you know I was the first one to point a telescope toward the sky. I saw things no one had seen before. Craters under the moon, Spots on the sun. Moons going around Jupiter. Oh, exploring the world surrounding our own world helps us locate our place in a space. Seeking the unknown helps us to understand who we are. The stars call out to the child scientist in all of us. Since the beginning of time, they have invited us to piece together the cosmic puzzles of the universe. As we snap each discovery into place, we create a beautiful, glowing picture of understanding. We all have this curiosity for the stars, but Dr. Kaler's love for the stars compelled him to explore them further and understand how a star shines. I remember when I was 18, I had a conversation with a high school counselor about my career. Well, Jim, have you thought about what you'd like to do with your life? Well, I like music a lot. I've played in several bands and orchestras, but my real love is astronomy. <laughs> astronomy? What can you do with that? I mean, who's going to pay you to be a stargazer? Needless to say, that counselor was pretty clueless when it came to understanding the power of astronomy. Dr. Kaler had to follow his heart and it was clearly pointing to the stars. Watching Dr. Kaler in the classroom is like watching a tennis match. He quickly paces back and forth, explaining the wonders of the cosmos. He can get quite animated to prove a point, so look out. You can't escape gravity, but defying it, putting something into orbit is easy. All you have to do is get something going very fast. 
If I throw this tennis ball, it falls. Gravity wins. If I throw another tennis ball faster, it falls too. It went farther, but gravity still wins. Now if, big word that if, if I could throw this tennis ball super duper fast, like five miles per second, I can't obviously, I'm not sure I could throw it five miles per hour, but if I could, it would fall too, but it would fall around the Earth. We call that an orbit. The ball still feels gravity, so it still falls. But the Earth now curves beneath it at the same rate, so that the ball and the Earth stay at the same distance apart. Remember, you can't escape gravity. Uh, excuse me, pardon. Sorry to interrupt your show again, but I figured if Galileo could speak, I, Sir Isaac Newton, could too. After all, I was the first stargazer to realize that Earth's gravity attracts more than an apple. See that magnificent moon up there? Smashing. It moves just like Dr. Kayla's tennis ball. It was born with so much speed that it doesn't fall toward the Earth, but falls around the Earth. And, since the sun is so enormous, its powerful gravity keeps all the planets falling around it, Mercury going the fastest, and Pluto the slowest. 